I wrote a play. I sold tickets to the play at 10 cents a ticket uh, to every neighbor and all of my parents' friends. I uh, lined them all up chairs in the driveway, and my parents killed me when they found out I had done it. So um, that really is, you know, you have to think of the risks, and you do have to hustle, but you do have to have permission to do it, you know, and I think I just didn't own the driveway, which was the, the theater for the, for the play. So let's think together, and my first thought is you are terrific people. You're all out here because you want to do something better. So if you're going to give some applause, give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> the second thing is, you're here because somebody organized it. And Kingsley, you did a fabulous job. I just disappeared again, but thank you, Kingsley. <laughs> and last of all, I really think that seeing you here indicates a change in the world. Today we live in a world where people are saying things aren't going the way they should be. We want to change the world. You can change the world. You can change it through an entrepreneurial spirit. You can develop a business. You can develop a social enterprise. You can develop what will make the world better. So I thank you for thinking that you could come out tonight and learn something. I, I learned a few things tonight. This is really good. But we have to all continue and do it every day. Um, entrepreneurship is not something you do at a conference, and that's not something you do at one network session. It's what you have to think every day as you study your classes, as you need the knowledge base, as you meet other people because you need the contacts, as you listen to other people because you need mentoring and wisdom. So I think we're on to something. The latest issue of the Harvard Business Review says the problem with the United States is that they're investing in jobs. They should be investing in ideas. Tonight, you're investing in yourself and in your own ideas, and I think we'll make together Canada be a much better place and I'll be part of it with you. Thanks. Thank you, uh, President. I appreciate uh, you handing off with such uh, kind words for my next prop game. Do you mind moving this forward? All right. Why am I wearing gear? from the fire force. Because if you need to understand how hard it is to go through hell and back as an entrepreneur, you need to have this type of protective clothing as your personal force of will. Entrepreneurs, do you agree with me? Yes. Yes. All right? All right, when you go through hell, it's because, it's not because of your abilities or talent or the fact that you can't uh, get it now, it's about your fortitude and your perseverance. There's something else you need. Next one, please. You need to be able to withstand all the criticisms, the critiques, the buckshot, the holes put into your business model, and stand up and keep walking. You need to be bulletproof. And that's because you need to have focus on the goals at hand. For you to be able to extend that curve into a successful company, you need to be fireproof, bulletproof if you can, in this uh, sort of metaphor that I'm painting here. And I, uh, I'm happy to actually uh, uh, you know, speak with some of the entrepreneurs uh, today that many of you understand, and all your supporters make that happen as part of a healthy ecosystem. All right, so as I'm standing now, we have uh, another 30 minutes of networking. Are we on track? How, how's our timing? Yeah? Um, I know it's a little bit off pace, but uh, I could, uh, I'm going to do voting. I do a lot of crowdsourcing. Would you like to continue on with our next speaker or continue? Uh, hands up. Next speaker? Fantastic. All right. I appreciate that, everybody. I think that will make the flow work very nicely. You continue networking thereafter. And uh, Kingsley tells me there is an after party, so hold tight. 
All right. If I can invite uh, Dr. Hein back to do a proper introduction for our next guest speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. So our next speaker, which I am happy to introduce, is going to speak about the DNA of an entrepreneur. And certainly his background and experience uh, should serve him well in, uh, in making this presentation. So, with over 30 years experience building teams, products, and businesses, best-selling author of a small business guide to doing big business on the internet, a past winner of the Oakry Next Generation Executive Award, and a lead to win faculty member, and a graduate of Carleton University, I am happy to introduce Brian Hurley. Hey, well, good evening. Uh, thank you, everybody, for, uh, for hanging around. I thought I might be speaking to an empty room tonight. Well, uh, Marcus, uh, speech is actually a good preamble to my. He was talking very much about uh, you know the DNA of the, uh, the entrepreneur, and like he, he highlighted the uh, the importance of execution. So, what I'm going to uh, to talk about today is uh, you know, really my thoughts on entrepreneurial leadership uh, from the context of the founding CEOs. You know, I'll talk about, and what I'm going to do is share with you, you know, what I would have wanted to, to have heard you know, back when I was starting out that I really wish I had known back when I started out. And along the way of the talk, I'll give you some specific uh, examples from my experience. And I'll explain what this particular thing is in my chest at the end. Okay, hey, first slide. So the first thing in the context of you know being a CEO in an entrepreneurial context is uh, know, knowing yourself. It's very important that you know your own strengths and in particular what your own weaknesses are. And knowing your weaknesses, you need to speak to you know, make sure you go out of your way to seek out a partner, advisor, or staff that are going to going to cover your weaknesses. And Knowing yourself and trying to know yourself is hard. I mean, it's really hard to admit to yourself that you're not good at something. And self-reflection can really be a depressing activity. So, one of the, I'll give you an example of one of the things I did early on to, to help out with this. Back at my very first job where I had a large team, I sat down and took my team aside and I asked one of our senior guys to take everybody away, go to a room, and come back and just tell me all the areas that I'm really not that good at compared to my peers. I don't want to hear the good stuff, I just want to know the bad stuff. And he went away and he came back and he gave me uh, a sheet with his feedback. And it's kind of funny because I remember I left it out of my bed at home and my wife saw it and she, she saw it and she was angry. She says, how could they, they, they say these things? And I said, you know what, they did me a great favor. I asked them to tell me where I could improve and get better and where my weaknesses were and they did. So one of the things I encourage you to do early on as you started your few your careers as an entrepreneurial CEO or founder is to understand where your weaknesses are and try to find that group of people who can help you understand where your strengths and your weaknesses are. The next one would be learning. I mean, it's a big part of entrepreneurial leadership is really you know, learning. It's a continuous learning experience. You'll never know everything. You'll never be an experience, have experience in all the areas that you'll need to to execute in the company. And it's a continuous learning experience. You'll need to learn about marketing, sales, technology, trends, how to manage people, how to raise money, a, a ton of stuff. And you'll need to know in particular what works, what doesn't work. You'll need to know where the common pitfalls are. And uh, simply put, you really need to know what you don't know in order to succeed. And events like this are actually an outstanding opportunity for you to develop this learning. I mean, one of the things I learned very early on is that when you come to events like this, it's an opportunity to find out what somebody's doing. And if they're in an area you're not familiar with or they're doing something you haven't done done yet, is to say, geez, you know, this is, you know, tell me, you know, if I'm just starting out in this space, what should I know that I don't know? And everybody will spend five, ten minutes to share this information with you. And you know you might not need that information at that point in time, but at some point in the future, that'll be invaluable. And you can also ask some things like, you know, what are the big challenges you see in this space? You know, what kind of problems do you run into all the time? You know, what are the, you know, you, there's a whole list of questions you can learn. We can collect that knowledge today to use into the future. So events like this, man, this is gold. Eat it up. 
The next one would be the vision. Now this is interesting because coming from a big company, vision also get, often gets watered down to the point that it's worthless and meaningless. But in a startup, I mean, the first step in your leadership is setting the vision, the goal of your company. And it's really a strong vision is really a statement of what you want to achieve. And it generates excitement of the common purpose. It also, for you, provides a fundamental bedrock on which you can make decisions. You can make compromises, and you can move forward. It's really the basis from which everything continues on with is your entrepreneurial uh, context. It will also help you recruit top quality staff, because people are going to come to you because they're excited about what you're doing. They want to be, able to be part of something that's big. It will help you raise money, because a big part of when people are looking to raise money is, uh, you know, Carly mentioned earlier is, you know, what's, what's the vision, what's the great idea, and, you know, laying out that vision to get the excitement and common interest is very important. And the other thing is that, uh, it's also very important, I think, as, uh, as our MC has been mentioning, is that as you run into all those problems and the low points, it's going to be the thing that motivates you and the team when you run up against these seeing insurmountable odds. You say, guys, this is what we're going all about, we're going after it, we're going to make it, we're, you know, look back on what we're trying to achieve, look forward, because we're going to get through those walls. A team. A strong team is a key enabler, obviously. And one of the things is the, this, you know, an entrepreneurial 